Me being the chosen one was like a blessing and exception. City known for homicide, majority depression. Grinding in the gym so I could live through the re What it do, YouTube? It's your boy, Mark from NYC, and we back with another reaction today. We're going to just switch it up slightly. We're going to go back to some, uh, some animal stuff, you know what I'm saying? Just... You know, let me know what y'all think, just a little fill out. But anyway, uh, why moose get violated by killer whales and why octopus punch fish. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the animal video was one of the first videos on my channel to reach over a thousand views. You know what I'm saying? So that's, you know, um, that's something I'm always going to have respect for. Uh, you know, something something that I'm always going to consider, even though my my channel was growing more basketball and then a little bit more on sports and stuff. Posted some soccer vids, you know, might post some football vids, whatever the case is. But, you know what I'm saying, without any further ado, let's get into the reaction. All right, bet. This is probably my favorite fact because it never doesn't freak people out. So like I said, moose are better swimmers than your mental health is prepared for. And they'll dive to the bottom of bodies of water to eat underwater plants and vegetation. If this antler tank stuck to lakes, it'd be fine. The problem starts when they swim from island to island or in bays. Because that puts them right in the range of the most oppressive force in the entire ocean. Those homicidal ocean orioles are the only natural marine predators of the moose. And since the moose is completely defenseless in the water, it's basically a free kill. But the real problem is that it doesn't happen often enough for the moose to recognize the water as a dangerous place. Moose respond to threats by learning, which is why they'll do the dash if they they smell a wolf or a bear or if they see scavenger birds like ravens. But since orcas don't regularly eat moose, they haven't learned, which ironically makes it easier for moose to get murked by a steroid murder dolphin. I also just want to point out how accurate this is. Orcas don't see humans as a food source, so a killer whale would actually bundle a full-grown moose and then let you live with a memory. But by far, the worst part is the only reason moose even swim in inlets or between the islands is to find food. That's like finding a shortcut to stop a shop and getting clapped by an equality symbol on the way. It's not often, but this sh does happen. If it makes the moose feel better, this shark eats polar bear and reindeer and nobody talks about it. You know what? You're right. That wasn't fair. I probably should explain. This shark has been known to eat polar bear and reindeer. It's a Greenland shark and it's kind of a well-known weirdo. They can live for 400, 500 years years, but they don't hit puberty until 150. They can grow to 21 feet long and weigh over 2,000 pounds. And most of them are blind thanks to a parasite that feeds off their eyeballs. You probably don't care about that. So yeah, the Greenland shark has been found with the remains of seals, polar bears, and reindeer. One shark was even found choking to death on a piece of moose off the coast of Newfoundland. They saved it, by the way. There's even some reports of them allegedly having a human leg in their stomach. But the Greenland shark lives life incredibly slow, and the fastest they'll ever go is about one and a half miles per hour. Which is why this fossil of a shark is usually a scavenger, meaning any polar bear or reindeer they eat was already dead. At the very least, extremely sick or dying, but that's still giving this molasses guppy a lot of credit. Because their secret to living long is doing it painfully slow. In fact, it's believed the only way they eat living prey like seals is by catching them while they're asleep. But Greenland sharks are perfectly harmless unless you eat them. Greenland shark meat is highly toxic, meaning it's the only time where you die when you bite the shark. It doesn't stop people from trying. But yeah, mummy shark ain't too bad. That was a lot. I'm trying to lock in. So there might be an actual reason for this. Octopus are one of the smartest things in the ocean, and oftentimes they'll team up with predatory fish to hunt together. And a lot of the time during these two player hunts, the octopus will Mike Tyson the fish they're supposed to be working with. When an octopus punches a fish during a hunt, the fish can lose its position and even miss out on an opportunity to catch food. Some scientists believe that by sucker punching the fish, the octopus is keeping his partner from cheating him out of his share. There's also a chance that the fish already stole from the octopus in the past, so this is just the octopus's way of keeping him in line. Of course, there's also times where the octopus isn't hunting and just throw hands for no reason. Ah. Some species have the intelligence of a two-year-old, meaning octopus are not only smart enough to get frustrated, they can also do things purely out of spite. Sometimes the generational trauma of being an octopus just makes you want to slap box a fish. It'd be like that. Not sure what this weird looking fish is, but this is why I won't swim in canal. That, my friend, is a sheep's head. Now you might be wondering why this fish looks like it should still be pissed about the Euro Cup. It's because they use those teeth to grind up shellfish muscles and clams, and in some places you can hear them munching away. You can find them in Cape Cod in Massachusetts, through Florida, the Gulf of Mexico, all the way down to Brazil. Also, they have a bad habit of stealing bait from fishermen. Luckily, they're not super aggressive, and they don't normally bite people unless you literally ask for it. But with a mouthpiece like that, they don't need to touch you to do damage to your mental. Also, the saltwater sheep head is apparently sweet tasting when cooked, but I wouldn't know because I do not have the strength to try one. Also, they're not the only fish with a dental plane. This is a trigger fish, and like the sheep said, they look like they only exist because of a drunk dare. But unlike the sheep said, the trigger fish lives up to its name by being highly aggressive and territorial. And the worst of all is the titan trigger fish, which is mean enough to send you to bed with more stitches than you woke up with. Now hear me out, but he looks just like... there's some people that didn't know clams could actually do this. Some clams, like scallops, use jet propulsion and move by flexing the muscles that join their shells. Doing this squirts water out the side, which launches the scallop. Now, they usually only do this when something like a starfish tries to eat them, but it takes a massive amount of energy for them to do this, so the scallop moves a couple feet and basically has to spend the rest of the day resting. Like...
Um, is there a reason the audio went out? That's a pangolin. We used to think they were related to armadillos and ant ears, but it turns out their closest relatives are in the carnivora group, which means this turtle gerbil is actually closer to grizzlies and hyenas than they are to armadillos. They use those huge claws to break through armadillo mounts, and because of those claws, they often walk on two feet, which is why they look a lot like a geriatric that can't find their glasses in the morning. Something like the Indian pangolin will crawl into a ball whenever they're in danger. And yes, they're real life sand slash. They're also by far the most polite thing I've ever seen. Looks like he's patiently waiting for his mom to get off the phone so he can ask her for $10 for the book fair. Baby pangolins are called panga pups and they spend the first couple of weeks riding on their mother's back. There's about eight flavors of these scale puppies. This tree pangolin has a prehensile tail that lets him eat while hanging from a branch. But since we can't have nice things, they're the second most trafficked mammal in the world behind humans. It's because people either eat them or use their scales to make pee pee pills or other nonsense like that. Also, they may or may not have had something to do with a certain virus. On an unrelated note, they have boobs. I don't know why that surprises me, but it does. To end on a wholesome note, here's a pangolin taking a mud bath. I actually love this story. So like I said, this pine cone with legs is the second most trafficked mammal in the world is because people either use it for bush meat or they use its scales for traditional medicine. To the point where sometimes poachers are caught with legit hundreds of dead pangolins in their freezer. Yeah, they got it bad. Enter the pangolin men. They're a group of charity workers that dedicated their lives to saving this animal artichoke. These men from Harare, Zimbabwe rehabilitate pangolins that were rescued from poachers. They feed them, they walk them, they basically treat them like their children. And to raise awareness, they even had a photo shoot with them and if you haven't seen it before, you're very welcome. The Tiki Highwood Foundation Network have rescued and taken in hundreds of pangolins that would have been slaughtered or boxed up if they hadn't. And as the bodyguard for this endangered animal, they walk this pangolin the same way you'd walk a child to his first day of preschool. Not only are they saving the lives of these little Pokemon, they're also raising awareness because the pangolin is by far the most disrespected animal that most people have never heard of before. Also in 2016, it became illegal to trade them internationally. They're still down pretty bad, but they're doing way better than they were 20 years ago. And if you're ever having a bad day, go ahead and Google pangolin men photo shoot. If this doesn't make you feel something, go lease a soul because you don't own one. Here's something you might not have seen before. This is a spirit bear. It's not a polar bear. It's actually an American black bear found in British Columbia. They're not albino, but these Caucasian carnivores have a mutation that causes melanin to not be produced. And this mutation is recessive, meaning two normal black bears can actually create a white bear as long as each parent has the gene. Which is probably awkward ah. because there's no Mori for bears. To try and explain that to a papa bear. And unlike almost every other mutation, this mistake actually helps them out because spirit bears can catch more fish. And that's because white fur is way harder to spot underwater than black fur. Just, you know, putting this out there. The same gene that causes black bears to come out cotton causes red hair in humans. Only difference is I'm pretty sure that bears have a soul. Also, it turns out a lot of these bears have preferences towards their own color. White kermode bears usually go for other whites and black typically stays with black. And yes, I'm still talking about bears, don't be that guy. I believe this is because the bear cups imprint on their mother's fur, so they end up seeking out the same color for their mom was because you really are your daddy's son. These ah. bears are sacred to indigenous people found in British Columbia. And according to some, this snow white bear was made to remind us that the earth was once covered in ice and glaciers. And their limited edition because it's believed there's about 400 of these vanilla bears said limited edition. But if you really want to see one, you could probably find one in the Great Bear Rainforest in Canada. Just remember the social distance because they may be whitewashed bleached bears, but they will still revenant your ass. Now, what if I told you there's an animal you should fear more than moose? Because as ridiculous as this overgrown swamp donkey is, I personally think camels are on another f***ing level. There's two flavors of this steroid llama. You got the dromedary, which has one hump, and the bacterium, which nature somehow gave two. Not nearly enough people know just how big they can get. The most broad Bactrian can weigh over 2,200 pounds and be seven and a half feet at the shoulder. If you rear end a moose, you're probably losing your life, but at least the casket can be opened. You probably don't get an open casket if the cause of death is a camel. One man in India accidentally left his camel tied up outside during a heat wave and he rushed to go untie it. To get revenge, the camel suplexed him and then decapitated him by chewing on his neck until his head and body were divorced. Oh, you don't believe me? Google it. I'm not going anywhere. Because even though camels eat grass and grains, nature gave them a meat eater's mouthpiece as a sick joke. The canine teeth helps them crush woody plants. But it also means if a camel bites you, that's a part of you you are just not getting back. Ha. Also, they have flesh teeth. This is what their mouth looks like. Their mouth is covered in papillae, which helps them force food down their throat. Technically not harmless, but this image isn't. Also, they can run you down at 40 miles per hour, and I don't think they get enough credit for that. Those sharp toenails that protect them from hot shifting sand can also shatter your rib cage with one kick. Nature gave them every possible way to put people on t-shirts and made it everyone else's problem. Imagine, for, bruh, I, I've been trying to really keep up with this video, just the information that he's spewing is super fast, but like, imagine something 2,000 pounds moving 40 miles per hour, that's fucking scary, that shit, the llamas are slept on, bro. Also, they can swim and they're very good at it. K-Ray camels are a type of dromedary that can quite literally pull up on you in the ocean. All of this video, whoever designed camels was fresh out of to give. Oh, God, bruh. 
Alright, so moose drop their antlers every year but grow them back in the spring because they use them to flex for females. And at first the antlers grow inside this soft skin with tiny hairs called velvet. But eventually the moose has a surge of testosterone where they basically become 7 foot frat boys on spring break. That's when the velvet sheds and the bones of the antlers harden. The velvet stays on the antlers for about 3 to 4 months until the moose rubs up against trees and bushes to remove them. Which is why they look like they bundied somebody. As much of a hate crime as this looks like, it doesn't hurt the moose at all and it's a lot like snakes shedding their skin. If anything, it's more like an annoying itch. Also, when a bull moose wants to pull a female, they use cologne just like you and me. Except their version involves digging a pit, peeing into the pit, and then rubbing and splashing a golden pool all over their antlers the R. Kelly way. Clearly they know what they're doing because smelling liquid sunshine causes the female moose to ovulate because nature's just weird like that. Facts. Wow, uh... Um, I'm trying to think. Super interesting. He said a lot of a lot of facts. He said things so fast that I didn't even really feel like I could pause it because I didn't really want to miss anything. But um, I didn't really know that moose really um, went into the ocean and, and was good swimmers like that. The things about the camel, uh, I didn't know camels got that big and ran that fast and were that vicious and looked that scary, like super scary. Um, the thing about the bears. Um, I think uh, the most interesting part about it was that it was a recessive gene, so technically two peep, two bears with the gene, even though they could have brown fur, can create. Uh, I forget the spirit bear, which is interesting, and also that uh, bears of the same color as themselves or as their as their mother usually go after that same bear, which is interesting. I think that that's kind of similar to humans. Like you see, most humans, like most most generalities speaking of generalities most chinese people I, like if i had to guess most chinese people are with chinese people most hispanics are with hispanics most mexicans are with mexicans most uh i would say probably most blacks are with blacks i feel like blacks black people are a little bit more of an outlier but for the most part like most white people are with white people um so i think that's interesting how how that works um Definitely. Uh, anything else? Uh, this moose thing was kind of interesting, but yeah, pretty much, pretty much all that I have to say about it. Definitely like if you uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. If you like these type of animal videos, you know, if it, if you guys like it, I'll do more of these type of videos. But without any further ado, oh, I mean, um, damn, I missed up. I missed up. I messed up. All right, so. Like, comment, share, and subscribe if you like these type of animal videos. Uh, if you want to see me react to more, suggest maybe. You know, I'll probably react to it, but you know what I'm saying? That's about it. I'll see you when I see you. Peace.